Hello everyone. In the last session, we looked at uh, actions and functions, but more specifically, we looked at functions. Uh, but actions are a little bit more involved because it involves uh, changes to the back end, so it can have side effects. Uh, so let's look at actions in this session. Uh, so we'll take like a simple use case scenario. Uh, so we have uh, two entities. We have the projects and the users. And the projects can have multiple users, and the users can have only one project. Uh, so let's take a scenario where the user wants to move from one project to another project. Uh, but there are a few constraints that need to be met before this user can move to another project. And in our hypothetical situation, uh, if the new project already has uh, seven or more members, uh, then we do not approve that move. Uh, so we return something saying that the project is full. And if the existing project, the current project that the user is working on, if it has uh, only three or less members, uh, then we don't let the user move as well. Um, so if both these constraints are passed, uh, then we allow the user to move from one project to another. And for this, uh, we are going to take two input parameters. Uh, we are going to take the user ID, and we are also going to take the project ID of the new project that the user wants to move to. Uh, so with this, uh, let's uh, start working on the actions part of it. OK, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to my business application studio here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create this action here. Um, so uh, instead of a function, in this case, we are going to use the keyword action. And then in the action, uh, we can give any name for the action. But let's uh, say, let's give something meaningful, move a user to another project. And we know that uh, we are going to have two input parameters for this. Uh, one is going to be the user ID, uh, and this is going to be a string, and this is the user that wants to move. And we are also going to take the project ID, and this is the project to which he wants to move to. Uh, so, And this is also going to be a string. Um, so this uh, completes the input part of it. Now, what are we going to return? Uh, so here, uh, let's make it a little bit more complex and return a type, a custom type. Um, and uh, we'll call this move result. And let's go ahead and uh, define this type. Uh, so move result is a custom type that we're going to uh, return back. Uh, so in our previous uh, session, we just returned string, which is a simple primitive type. Uh, but here we are going to have a custom type. So this custom type, move result, uh, so I'm going to define this. And this, uh, let's say we return a code. Uh, so let's have a positive code if it is successful. Uh, so we are going to have an integer. And then we'll have a success flag. Uh, and let's call this Boolean. Uh, so whether it is successful or not, whether the move was successful or not. And then the move status. So we can have a message uh, stating uh, how the move went. And then we'll also uh, return back the user ID, which is also going to be string. And in this case, we are just going to return what the user ID was. And then we'll also send the user name. And this will be the string. Uh, so we'll also return back the user name. And then the project ID. So this will be the new project that he moves to. And this is pretty much the string that he sends uh, to us. Uh, so this is also going to be a string. And then the project name. So we are going to have a custom type uh, that returns all of this. Uh, so a lot more complex than what we did before. Uh, so let's go ahead and check how we are going to do this. Uh, so let me save this, first of all, and then go into my JS file where I can do the implementation. Uh, so I go into my JS file. And we know that we do have to do it on the on. Uh, so I'm going to do srv.on. Now, before I do that, I do have a custom handler for my read. And I'm going to comment this out uh, so this doesn't interfere with our, uh, uh, with our new custom handler. So I'm going to comment this out. Um, so you may not have this, but uh, yeah. OK, so let's go ahead and implement this, uh, uh, this uh, action. OK, so uh, the name of the action is move user to another project. Uh, so this needs to match exactly the action that I defined here. And uh, that is exactly 
the name but let me just make sure okay and then it takes a function parameter and the function parameter has a request object and I'm pretty sure I will need this request object uh, so I'm, I will take it right away and I know that it's probably I'll be using async await uh, so I will also use async await right off the bat Okay, so we have it async await. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, I know that the user is going to send the user ID and the project ID as the input parameters. Uh, so I'm going to destructure it and get those values. So user ID, project ID, and I can get this from the request object and the request dot data. Uh, and we will get the user ID and the project ID. So the, these values, I get it from the user. Uh, now let's uh, have a connection to the database. Uh, DB equals SRV dot transaction. And then I'm going to do request object. So passing in this context, I can have uh, access to the database. And let me also get destructure the entity. Uh, users because we'll be modifying this user stable equals SRV dot entities. Okay, so far uh, pretty much uh, what we've done in the previous session. So these three steps, uh, that's exactly what we did in the previous session itself. Okay, let's go ahead and check for the first constraint. And this is to see if the user uh, the project that he's working on, uh, let's check if it has, uh, let's check how many how many users are there in that project. Uh, so for that, we need to know what project he's currently working on. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from the users table, db.read, so there is a convenience function and I can do the users and I can get the following fields, the ID. We didn't do this in the last session, but this is how you would uh, actually ask for just uh, the fields that you want. Uh, we'll also get the username while we are at it. And I'm interested is in the project that I'm currently working on, the user is currently working on. And I will call this uh, current project ID. Now we want to f then query this project this current project and find out how many users are there in that project. Uh, we also need to have a where clause uh, and this will be um, ID is equal to the user ID. So basically I'm trying to find out what project that this user is currently working on. Um, the reason I want to know what project he's currently working on is to find out how many users are there in that current project. Okay so now that I have that I can do a console.log uh, and I can do uh, user info and then I can do just the results, uh, just the first uh, entry from this result. Uh, so this will give me the user, uh, the username and the current project ID. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to destructure this um, so that I can get all the values. Uh, so username comma project. Now this is uh, a little bit of a nested structure so I'm going to do another destructuring and I'm going to get the current project ID. So this will give me the current project ID uh, that the user is working on. So from results zero. Okay so now that I have the current project ID uh, what I can do is I can do another uh, call. I can do an await and db.read. Uh, again, I will read users, and this time I will do a where clause. And this time, what I want to do is where this project ID is the current project ID. Now, this uh, will let me know how many users are there in this project. Uh, so I can do a console.log and existing project member count and this should give me the number of uh, projects, a number of uh, users in this project. Uh, so I can do a length and this will give me how many users are working in this project. Now what we want to do is if this results dot length, uh, if it is uh, less than three or less than four, let's say less than four, uh, then we don't want to allow the user to move. Uh, so we're just going to do, we're not going to do any updates. Uh, we're just going to return and we want to return this structure right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a negative code because this is, uh, this didn't work out. Uh, success is going to be false. 
and then the move status I can simply say uh, sorry existing project has only three or less users uh, so you cannot move. I'm not going to fill in the other fields for now. Um, so this is a, a failed. Uh, so this returns and the user did not move to the next project. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, let's check for the next condition. So if this uh, passed, then we need to check for the next condition. And for the next condition, I'm going to do results equals await and db.read. And what I want to do is again read users, uh, but this time I want to read the uh, with the new project ID. Uh, so ID, and then project dot name. I'll also get the project name as new project name because we want to output this for the user. Uh, and I'm going to do a where clause, and I'm going to say where project underscore ID equals project ID. And this is the project ID that the user supplied. So this is the new project ID. So basically, we are reading users table and finding out how many people are working in this new project. Um, so let me also destructure and get the new project name. Uh, again, it's a nested uh, stuff. So we'll have to do uh, two destructurings. Uh, so new project name. And this is going to be equal to results uh, zero. So this is going to give me the, pro the new project name. OK, so now that we have this, uh, is assigned a value but not used. That's fine. Uh, so if the new project has already more than seven members, so if the new project already has more than seven members, then again, we don't want to allow the user to move. Uh, so we're going to do a code, uh, this time minus 200, a different code. Uh, and success is going to be false, of course. And move status is going to be sorry, uh, but the new project has seven or more users. OK, so this is looking good. I will close this as well. Now, if all these constraints are passed, uh, then we are good to move. Uh, so we can do a results, and this time we can do an await, and then we can do a db.update, and then we can do users, and then we can do dot .set. And what we want to do is we want to set his project ID to the new project ID that was supplied. So we are going to change his project ID and we just only want to change it for that user. So we want a where clause. Uh, otherwise, we will end up uh, changing it for everyone. Uh, so ID is the user ID that the user supplied. Uh, so this is the update statement that is going to change the backend. Uh, now let's do a console.log and uh, user info after the update. And then we will simply do the results. We'll do a JSON. Uh, we'll do results just like that. Actually, you know what? Let me just do a JSON dot string five. Okay, so we have the results, and now we want to return this entire structure, and we'll do a code, and we'll have a positive code because this is successful. Success is going to be true in this case, and the move status so i'll say successfully moved to new project and then what i'll do is uh, the user id i can simply pass in the user id and the username i have the username as well so i can pass in the username and then i can do the project id and i can do project name which is going to be the new project name. OK, I think we are all set. Uh, so this should uh, work, I believe. I will stop it, and I will do a semicolon here as well. 
Uh, let me save it. Let me also do a format document. Okay, everything looks good. Now let's do a CDS watch. Uh, and also let me go into request.http. Uh, I will send a request. Um, so with actions, it needs to be a post method. Uh, so uh, I will add move user to another project. And it's going to be a post. And it's going to be HTTP all the way up to here. And then it's going to be move user to another project. OK, so we have this. And then we are going to say content type is going to be application JSON. So we are going to send the body here. And then in the body, I need to send a user ID. And I also need to send a project ID. So I already have a user ID and a project ID that works. So I'm just going to copy and paste those uh, user ID and project IDs. And if everything works, uh, this user uh, will now be moved to this project. Uh, so let me go ahead and paste it. Um, so what I'm going to do is first, let's make sure that the user is in a different project. Uh, so CDS watch. OK, let me go here. And let's uh, look at this uh, user. Uh, so I'm going to go to this user, Control F, Control V. And this user uh, has a project ID that starts with 300 or whatever. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to change this user to this project ID. OK, so let's go ahead and run it. Localhost is not a entity or function import. Um, oh, what did I do here? I have this multiple times. So let me move this. OK, now let's try it again. OK, so now uh, we get this custom data type that we defined. So code is 100, success is true, successfully moved to new project. This is the user ID, Stacy Sisons. Uh, and let's uh, refresh this. And we should see that this project ID should now change. So let me go ahead and refresh this, Control F. And let's go to this user again. And you can see that the user's project ID has now changed. And that's the same project that we wanted the user to change. Uh, so both the conditions matched. Uh, so, and that's why the user was able to change. OK, that's it, folks. Uh, so that's how you would uh, do an action. You would define an action, and that's how you would implement it. And you can have your own custom data type returned. See you in the next session. Bye.